Of course, two days ago, there was an overwhelming political stories that has uh, subsumed most of the conversations around few subsidy and its aftermath. But tonight, we are reopening that chapter. We are looking in depth on what the federal government and the Nigerian labor bodies are talking about. Uh, you know that uh, the federal government representatives and the leadership of the Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress resumed their conversations on Monday and talked on steps to mitigate the effect of the removal of fuel subsidy by President Bola Tunubu. After that meeting at uh, the State House, the government and the organized labor said they have agreed to set up a committee, uh, a steering committee that is, that would receive reports from other subcommittees within eight weeks. Let me allow you, uh, remind you of some of the outcome of that meeting. We reconvened today and then both parties went through this list and we ticked off the viable ones. Those things are broken into three different categories. The immediate, those that can be of uh, low hanging fruit in the immediate C, then in the short run, the medium term, and the long term. This meeting, you know, is intentional to give life to those agreements we reached from. And as at the end of this meeting, we have set up committees in those key areas uh, to commence work. There is a school of thought that is of the opinion that, okay, minimum wage, because, you know, it's a function of law. And in the law, the committees that will review minimum wage is, is already there statutorily. Uh -huh. So those con that committee will also kick, start their functions. Uh -huh. So for us, uh, those terms of reference, we could not agree broadly, totally, on the, on the final terms of reference. But we will work on that between today, tomorrow, and have the full terms of reference across all boards. All right. That was the aftermath. I'm, I'm very sure that uh, I, I mean, I'm still continuing to buy fuel at over 500. But I don't know what it's like wherever you are across the country in Nigeria, um, whether in Port Accord or in Taraba State, or you find yourself in Bauchi or in any part of uh, Enugu or Anambra, wherever you may be across the country, what is the situation like in your area? The federal government is sitting with the organized labor and they're looking at ways to mitigate what has become a major shock. It's about 159% in increase of the f f price of petrol, which is a major commodity that will determine a whole lot in the economy of Nigeria. Let me uh, let you in on what the federal government is looking at. In terms of um, uh, their own projection, these are some of the issues. Don't forget that the president met with members of the National Economic Council, uh, and uh, that was their first meeting, and it was, he made it very clear on what he wanted uh, as far as the economy is concerned. But the governors are also speaking about um, the, their own plans in the state, the plan for allowances for civil servants and a host of others. But let me allow you to listen to the governor of Bauchi State, who was one of the governors who spoke after the NEC meeting, so you get a perspective on what uh, the NEC meeting aftermath uh, was like. Council discussed extensively on all the multidimensional problems and challenges of the ink arising from the increase or removal of the subsidy and the committee is set up. We are going to use all these as working documents because we cannot just say we will stop from where they have left off. We are starting again and again and again so that at the end of the day we provide solution, we will provide solace and circle to everybody. We were suggested as, a, as an allowance for the cost of living adjustment allowance by the all right, uh, that's the governor of Bauchi State, Governor Bala Mohammed, uh, briefing after the NEC meeting. But let me show you what some of these plans look like. Uh, the plans of the federal government, the agenda is to set up a presidential uh, steering committee, and there are sub areas uh, cash transfer, social investment program, 
cost of governance, energy, mass transit, and housing. These are sub areas that uh, will take them about eight weeks to sit down, and there will be a general report on that. Let me show you uh, so yet another uh, information that might be very important for this conversation that we'll be having tonight. And so it's uh, the recommendations from uh, the National Economic Council and uh, over 700 billion as a cost of leaving allowance to civil servants and NEC committee to work out within two weeks modalities for organizing and distributing the palliatives. There are more plans uh, that they have. The issue of the CNG is also, uh, also there and they are planning uh, on a monthly basis a petroleum allowance for civil servants. So if you're in the state uh, and you're a civil servant, uh, 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 raise up, you might just be a beneficiary of some of these. And there's also a possibility of obtaining funds from the World Bank and London partners to implement the program of compressed natural gas for vehicles in the country as part of measures to bring down the price of fuel. Let's take these conversations forward, everyone. I'm being joined tonight by the president of the Trade Union Congress, and all, of course, uh, he's also the president of Pengasan, uh, Comrade Festus Osifo. He joins us live here in Abuja Surah. Thank you so much, Comrade, for joining us tonight. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sheung. Good Appreciate evening, it. and good evening, uh, our viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, the meeting went well this time around, did it? On Monday, your meeting uh, of Monday. Uh, yes, um, we, we had a meeting with the, you know, um, we... The last time we met, we took like uh, a 10 working days uh, adjournment so that we we'll, would we'll all go back to the drawing board. We have discussions with our partners and we we'll return back to the table. So we actually went back on, on Monday uh, to have that conversation on Monday 19th. Uh, so we, we had that meeting and uh, during the meeting, we, we, we looked at different areas. We looked at uh, where we stopped the last time we took we took appraisal of the things we need to do moving forward and how can we start implementing most of these things. Because again, the Nigerians don't want a lot of talk, 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 and it will turn to another talk shop, just as we have known. Uh, so um, largely, I could say the meeting went well because we agreed uh, jointly to have uh, the presidential steering committee. Then beyond the presidential steering committee, you know, just as you have highlighted that well, uh, some of the breakdown. Uh, but um, at the end of the meeting, the labor input was also sorted. In fact, I'm just coming from a meeting now where we are also trying to make further input into, into, into what you have just read. What you have just read is not the finality uh, because we are also making our input into it. Mm. Mm. And I know that labor also has, is, I mean, from the TUC point of view, you have your own demands, yeah. which will come uh, to uh, which... A lot of people will say, since the increase in the price of fuel, it was about 100 and almost a 160% increase. And in some other states, there are, it's more, True. depending on the distance of the movement of, of the product True. from Lagos uh, uh, up, I mean, whether north or south. True. Um, and in this case, uh, the price of commodities have changed. Uh, a lot of things have changed. Our lives have now remained the same since then. We started thinking of alternatives of... Uh, of some of these issues. Uh, the, the NNPC has been saying that there are more jobs that are being created. I don't know how true is that. Did you, you, you heard that, isn't it? Mm. That, I mean, since uh, the stoppage of uh, uh, free subsidy uh, and petrol, that there, there, there is some provision of jobs. Uh, well, I think as of today, we cannot actually verify that. Maybe we wait for statistics from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics because as of today, uh, that for us, we cannot verify. So, you know, the last time I was here, this was part of a challenge that we were talking about. That, okay, uh, that the provision of the subsidy was there till the end of June. That the best thing to have been done is that all parties, all stakeholders should have sat down together what we are trying to do today, where the things we were supposed to have discussed between May 29th and the end of June, uh, so that it will not be medicine after death. If we had sat down, like the issues you've talked about, like the issues of CNG, like these other palliatives that we are talking about today, these are the palliatives that should have been discussed in one month prior to the end of June. Uh, but uh, as of today, just as you have alluded to, Nigerians are facing a lot of hardship 
all across. Uh, Com it's, comrade. it's really hard and yeah. it's really terrible. It, it, it's a hard time. I mean, it, it, things are, were hard before mm. the incre increase uh, in the price of uh, fuel. And the, the NNPC, GMD, was here on this program and they said, look, the, the federal government has been defaulting in the payment of the subsidy. There's a backlog. And there is provision in the budget, but there is, the, the, the federal government has been defaulting. In reality, <laughs> there's really no payment of a subsidy. And there are a lot of Nigerians who believe that it was in the right, right direction. The likes of Bill Gates, Aliko Dangote, and some other uh, eminent Nigerians have thought that the decision was a right one. But you are insisting, as the bodies of a labor union, that there must have been some consultation. But where we are at right now, if you look at what the NEC agreed on, is it a way to go? Uh, petroleum allowances, um, also CNG issues, they're also thinking about getting money from funding partners. Are you aware of that? Uh, yes, first of all, uh, the challenge here is this. Uh, it's just like a company. So you have the board of directors and you have the management of a company and you bring them in to manage the company. In most cases, when they mismanage the company, at the end of the day, they will tell you that they are declaring redundancy and that they are firing personnel. So personnel, are, personnel cost is always the soft target in any organization. So the same thing. We understand that Nigeria has been passing through some monetary and fiscal uh, policies pressure over the years. Uh, but who brought us to where we are today? Uh, so it is the easiest target, the people, okay? What, the only commodity that is being subsidized for the people, at the end of the day, it was taken away. So the people actually are the easiest target. Some of the questions that Nigerians have asked over the period is that what has government brought to the table? You hear today that the Salaries and Wages Commission are thinking of increasing the emolument of the political office holders. So that is what we have been asking. You are asking the people to tighten their belts. But at the end of the day, what have you brought to the table? What is the contribution of the political class to this economic um, logjam that we have today, or that we have today as a country? Today, for example, if you see one of the demands that we, you said we will get there. Yes, if you sure. look at it, you could see something. We talk about the cost of governance. Today, you still import all manner of cars from different parts of the world. But you have some cars that have been manufactured in Nigeria. Why can't you put, create policies that would uh, encourage the manufacturing sector and also reduce the cost of governance by, for example, looking at the Nigerian made vehicles, for example, the convoys that you, you see governors, they are still going about business as usual. You see the new legislatures, you see their convoys is endless. So clearly, what we are saying is that if federal government was not able to fund subsidy, at whose expense? What were the things they were doing with our funds? All the money that they have borrowed, the ways and means that went over 23 trillion, what did they do with it? They need to also offer explanations to Nigerians. Not that at the slightest provocation, they push Nigerians uh, to, uh, to the streets. They push Nigerians and they tell them that we must tighten our belt. Meanwhile, they are losing their ass. So these are all the conversations. What the governors have put on the table. Uh, yes, these are all the issues that we are looking at as labor. Not just the state government, even the federal government. And that is the conversations we are having in order for us um, to have, I mean, we are currently putting together the terms of reference of those subcommittees uh, so that we look at these issues critically and we will examine them and we'll come up with a position or what we think will solve uh, or rather ameliorate the pains of Nigerians as look, of today. Before I go into some of the demands that uh, TUC had put forward, you mentioned the issue of cost of governance. Mm. Have you put forward to the federal government that, look, if you want to, if you are serious federal government or people in the executive, that you want to, you mean business. Yeah. Uh, cut co governance in these areas and in these areas. Do, have you put forward to them practical examples of where they can cut down and tighten their beds? Uh, yes, absolutely. If you look at the demand that we submitted, and if you even look at the committee you talked about, you, there's a committee on the cost of governance. Absolutely. And so that is what that committee will do. And we are very serious about it. This is not lip service. It can no longer be business as usual. So when the committee gets to work, we have lists of areas, both at the federal government, at the state government, MDAs, parastatas. We have lists that we have put forward on how we think uh, some of these issues could be mitigated. Because if we don't do that, if we don't checkmate them, 
at the end of the day, is going to bite hard on the people. Because if you look at the revenue, most of our revenue today is going into recurrent expenditure. And if we continuously push our revenue to, and if we, if we continuously push our revenue to uh, the recurrent expenditure, and mm. the current expenditure continuously soar, mm. they will come again tomorrow. They can even tell us to start paying 50% tax mm. on the petroleum product. A lot of people, and those are the yeah, issues that lot, we will. A lot of people will even raise question mark on, for example, because I was asking for practical examples of where federal government can tighten their beds. Mm. For example, uh, there was a report that says that. Uh, it, it cost about 80 billion naira uh, to fund the management of the presidential fleets in 2022. That kind of example is what Nigerians perhaps, uh, I mean, if you're asking that federal government, if you want to look serious, or state governors or legislatures, if you want to be serious, show Nigerians examples of how tough things are and how you are cutting costs. Have you listed those kind of examples? To you me? are very correct. You know, um, I don't want to preempt the work of the committee. And these are part of the things that we look at. Uh, beyond that at all, if you look at over the years, if you look at our budgeting system, they do the envelope kind of budgeting system. If you look at the budgeting system in the last, in the last three, four, five years, you will see that a lot of items are recurring. For example, they tell you that they want to buy uh, computers in the, in the state house. So every year, they budget for about 1,000, 2,000 computers are in the state house. If you even look at the issue of the service wide vote, the service wide vote, they lump in a lot, a lot of money into it. Uh, 3 trillion, 4 trillion, 5 trillion into service wide vote. And most of this money at the end of the day, they will tell you that is the shortfalls in other ministries that they want to channel this money into. And most of these things are not audited. Uh -huh. So if today, if you close down the service wide vote, for example, or you reduce it by 80%, you are going to save nothing less than uh, about 3 to 4 trillion naira. And that money can be to, uh, pushed into uh, capital expenditure. So those are some of the challenges. The presidential fleet you talked about is one of the things we will look at. Uh, what, are, what is the cost of managing it? And most of these costs, do they actually go into what they are meant for? Then in the presidency, for example, what is the cost of feeding? If you see the cost of feeding, for example, a cost of entertainment is humongous. How can we cut down that? You come to National Assembly, you see that their budget has actually gone up. So we also have to look at that because they must also sacrifice. But if you tie that to what the salaries and, and, and the wages commission are doing today, you will see that they are even jacking up the pay of the political office holders. Why those that are down there below, um, down there any 30,000 are, are living in mystery. Let so me, we must, yeah. we must, we, we must push this through. Part of the argument mm. that labor uh, I mean, been putting forward in the past few days uh, the issues of how the 800 million US dollars that the past government uh, put uh, proposed to the World Bank, which were they were seeking approval of the National Assembly, uh, part of the plan uh, which is also recurring in uh, the subcommittee and reflecting uh, th that they will go ahead is the issue of cash transfers, handout like uh, social investment programs of the federal government. And I, uh, I, mean, I remember you mentioned to us that you have your questions over the, de uh, the deployment of, of the, that, the resources, the data, the diary, and the register of those programs and how effective it, it is. Uh, and you're looking at the fact that you don't really trust it, but it's still reflective here. You think that, uh, and you've said it, that those 5,000 Naira being given to people, Nigerians, may not amount to anything. Yes, that's correct. But it's still reflective here. Uh, yes, uh, so um, what the committees, what the committees are going to do, the sub-committees, the technical committees, they are all going to sit down, then these processes will be reviewed. Where we need to bring in some consultants to look at the data that they have, we can bring in uh, like uh, PwC and KPMG and the likes to look at this data and actually interrogate those data because they are telling us that they have a data that works and they believe in the process and what they are doing. We said no, that the conditional cash transfer that you have done, that it has not worked. 
just as you have highlighted, we talked about the data, we talked about the BVN numbers, we talked about all these. But they also said, I mean, there was also a conversation to say that they want to expand this even to those uh, that are the lower income earners, both in the private sector as well as the public sector. So the purpose of that committee is to now review uh, take holistic review of the entire uh, system to see how functioning it is and to also see if what they said, what they have claimed over the years that they have been doing, if it actually gets to the people. So we don't mind bringing uh, people that are sophisticated in data analytics and those that can actually assist us in querying that process. If we don't trust the process, we will not support it. All right. Mm. Let's look at something, and I have a, a few concerns here, uh, a few questions about your proposal, the demands of the TUC to the federal government, and this was as of the uh, 4th of June, and, and you said that this is for immediate implementation. One of it is that you want status quo to be maintained on the price of petrol, and that means that you want us to go, uh, the federal government to maintain one hundred and. Uh, 80, 84? 80, yeah, approximately. Yeah. Mm. So that's what, that is your first demand. Mm. But is that realistic? Because they've, they've started guess, implementing. You know, you know, when, and when, they said there's no going back. When you put a charter of demand, uh, when you put a charter of demand, a charter of demand is not your finality. So what we put together was what we think will work. You know, when you go into negotiations, at the end of the day, you also listen to the other party. So for us, we felt that go back, to the status quo, let us continue our conversation. But in the part of federal government, they also explained that if they go back to the status quo, that at the end of the day, and they now announce that they want to commence at the end of June, that's going to be problematic because marketers will hold their product and queues will return all over the country. So they also put that forward as well. So it was also left for us to do a review of, of, of that holistic. Are you looking but at a meeting we, as a middle point? Uh, yes, in negotiations, you always look at middle point. Uh, but overall, at the end of the day, the neck of TUC in our meeting, what we showed was that, yes, we will continuously push government to go back. Uh, but we should not close door to conversations. We should not close door to negotiations. That was why we now moved on to the other list All in right. the demand. So you said in, on the second on your list of demand is minimum wage should be increased from the current 30,000 to 200,000 naira before the end of June 2023 with consequential adjustment on cost of living allowance like feeding, transport, and housing. And I ask this question. In the 2023 budget, over 8 trillion is uh, budgeted for the current expenditure. That's over 40% of the entire budget, which a lot of people consider that is too high considering what is budgeted for capital expenditure and other things. So if you say this, let's, uh, I'm trying to calculate the percentage of 30,000 to 200,000. Uh, that's, uh, way, that, that's almost uh, 150 or more percentage mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, increase that you are looking at. It then means that, for example, the recurrent expenditure uh, 40 times 150, 40% uh, times 150%, that's perhaps what we can, what we'll be going into. So if we have 8 trillion, the federal government should be budgeting something very high, maybe in the region of 20 trillion to be able to pay salaries. I know. First of all, Ashen, that recurrent expenditure is not just salaries alone. If you look at the breakdown of recurrent expenditure, it's not just the salaries of civil service uh, but, uh, or civil servants. But again, if you are going to negotiation, you don't start from your rock bottom. So for us, we did an analysis of what could be the commensurate pay for Nigerian workers today to be the minimum as a benchmark. Then when we calculated that minimum, we had to add a premium to it because you must leave a room for dialogue, you must leave some room for negotiations. Um, we've been asked, why 200,000 Naira? And for us, it was very simple. You know, we had some conversation a while ago, I think it was in this station, in one of your sister's program, where we stated that the reason we went to that was because we know that federal government wanted to float the currency. Uh, Shehun, today, you know that if before now, if government was selling, uh, let's assume um, they said they were spending $4 billion on the subsidy for, per month. If that is anything to go by, what that means is that because today the Naira has been floated, 
You know, that 400 billion Naira was actually based on 450 Naira CBN exchange rates to a dollar. But today, it is about 700 plus, which is almost about uh, 70, 80 percent much more. So if that is correct, what that means is that they would have been spending nothing less than 700 billion Naira per month. So the question we have asked is that if you were, uh, the money that you have saved, they said they will save money. So what percentage of this money will, will, no, will go to Nigerians, mm -hmm. number one? And secondly, at all, if you look at what the minimum wage was, was agreed on in 2019, what, our, what, what was our inflation rate as a, as a 2019? What was the purchasing power parity? What was the, um, so if you put all these economic indicators together, and as at then, the exchange rate as of 2019 was about 360 Naira. So if you put all these together, you look at the inflation between 2019 and today. By the time you compound that inflation, it's over 80%. Then when you now also look at the exchange rate between that time and now, you can see that the exchange rate has also moved by appreciable percentage. So when you compare this, into the 30,000, you could see that there is need for us to do something massive. Not just something uh, minimal, but something massive. Yeah. So again, Shane, to, to, to anchor that here, as government, government must put on their thinking cap. You cannot continuously tell us. I mean, we can't continue business as usual. You must put on your thinking cap on how to generate revenue. You must put on your thinking cap on how to attract foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment. This is why government exists. Government is not, I mean, there's no easy solution anywhere. Yeah. Comrade, there's a whole long list that you have demanded. I've touched on a, a bit of uh, some of those that are very critical, the, the cost and a few other things, the CNG and or what have you. We look at how the negotiations continue in the coming days and hopefully whatever the government is putting forward, it does look to me that the government is between uh, the wall and a hard place and... Uh, uh, there's no place to turn now. They can't go back on their decision. The Nigerian people are suffering and feeling the heat. Then they need to face it and be able to deal with the issue. And I hope that uh, they take the right decision. Thank you so much, uh, Comrade Professor Sosifo, President of uh, TUC. Thank you so much indeed for Thank your time. Thank you so much, uh, Shane, for having me. Yeah, thank you.